Hi everyone, this is Mostly Casual Commander. I'm BK, and today I have a game of Commander for you. Our playgroup are big fans of the Innistrad plane, and we're excited to showcase some of these Commanders for you from Midnight Hunt. If you could, we'd really appreciate any support if you could subscribe to the channel and like the videos that you've been enjoying. J-Man won the die roll, so he'll be going first. He's piloting Tovalor, Dire Overlord. He's a werewolf commander, uh, really wants to see a bunch of werewolves and wolf creatures onto the battlefield, and then benefit from the additional powers on the reverse side of the cards. So he has Spire Garden, Firelit Thicket, Mountain, Toski, Daybreak Ranger, Reckless Stormseeker, and Werewolf Pack Leader. Up next is Kovax, who has Laisa, Forgotten Archangel, as his commander. She's looking to ensure that his dying creatures can come back to his hand, as well as exiling creatures that an opponent control when they die. He kept a six card hand with Cabal Coffers, two Swamps, a Plains, Risen Executioner, Orzhov Kirun, and head to bottom, Thalia's Lancers due to a mulligan. Next up is Busterkins, playing Lenore Autumn Sovereign, the Selesnia Commander, who cares about Coven ability. So if you have creatures with three different powers, then you can get plus one counters and draw cards. He kept a seven card hand with Temple of Plenty, Plains, Kyler, Sigardian Emissary, Heron's Grace Champion, Moonsilver Key, Avacyn's Pilgrim, and Soul Ring. And fourth in the turn order is myself, BK. I'm playing Eloise, Nefalia Sleuth really likes to investigate and make a bunch of clues. It likes to sacrifice tokens to surveil. So there's a bunch of graveyard shenanigans and combo finishers in this deck. I'm really excited to play it. I kept a land heavy seven card hand with Swamp, Three Islands, Fierce Guardianship, Erdwall, Illuminator, and Reanimate. So we choose our seats at random, and this is where our players are seated for this game. We hope you enjoy, and when you finish watching it, please leave comments to let us know what you think. So J-Man's up first, and he kicks things off by playing a Spire Garden. Comes in untapped because there's three opponents of his. Crypt of Agadim comes out for Kovacs, and over to Busterkins, who draws and plays a Plains for turn. He then taps for his turn one Soul Ring, classic commander. Then he pays two to cast Moon Silver Key, which can be sacrificed to tutor up a basic land or a monorock. I drop a Swamp for my land and pass. Firelit Thicket hits the board for J-Man, and then he spends two to cast Werewolf Pack Leader. It's a werewolf that draws him cards if he has enough power on the board when he attacks. Cabal Coffers hits the battlefield for Kovacs, and he passes over to Busterkins. He plays Temple of Plenty as his land for turn, and he gets to scry one. Keeps it right on top and moves over to me. I play an island for turn, and then I cast Erdwall Illuminator, hoping to create additional clues whenever I investigate the first time each turn. Mountain hits the battlefield for J-Man, and he casts Reckless Stormseeker, which not only makes it daytime, it could also grant haste and plus one plus O to one of his creatures, and it gets worse whenever it flips. On his combat, it triggers, and he gives itself plus one plus O in haste. Then J-Man swings at BK with total power six, therefore triggering his Werewolf Pack Leader. He draws a card, and I take six. On to Kovacs' turn, he plays a Swamp, and then he reveals Tetsamok, Primal Death. Its reveal ability has it placing a Prey Counter on a target creature, and then when Tetsamok enters a battlefield in the future, it'll blow up all the things with Prey Counters. Kovacs did not cast a spell in his turn, so it becomes Night, and Nightbound creatures flip over. Busterkin deploys a Somberwald Sage, which is a Monodork, but specific to casting creature spells. He then activates his Moonsilver Key and fetches up a Basic Forest. With that, he casts Avacyn's Pilgrim, another Monodork, tapping only for white. He passed the turn, and because he cast two spells, it becomes daytime, and daybound creatures flip. Onto my turn, I play an island as my land, and then I cast Trail of Evidence, which will allow me to investigate whenever I cast an instant or sorcery. I pass to J-Man, who plays Rootbound Crag as his land for turn. Then he casts Toski, Bearer of Secrets, hoping to increase his card draw engine. He then moves to combat, giving Toski haste, and he swings at Busterkins with everything. He draws a card off Werewolf Pack Leader. Busterkins declares no blocks, taking 7 damage and allowing J-Man to draw 3 cards. On to Kovacs' turn, he plays a Swamp. Then he casts Orzov Kirun, trying to get a little bit more ramp action going on. He then reveals Tetsamok Primal Death again, putting a Prey Counter on the Somberwald Sage. On to Busterkin's turn, he casts Tristani's Summoner, which has attached to it a 2-2 Knight, a 3-3 Centaur, and a 4-4 Rhino with Trample, definitely putting Coven online. I play a Swamp as my land for turn, then I cast Zulaport Cutthroat, still trying to set up my board. If I could start sacrificing creatures, I could start draining my opponents. Command Tower comes out for J-Man, and following that, he casts his commander, Tovalar, Dire Overlord. This allows his wolves and werewolves to draw him cards when they deal combat damage to a player, and it could possibly transform his werewolves on his upkeep. So he moves into combat, giving Tovalor plus one plus one haste. On the attack, his werewolf pack leader triggers, drawing him a card. Then he deals 8 total damage to Kovacs. This triggers Toski and Tovalor, drawing him a total of 5 cards. That's not too bad for a gruel color deck on turn 5. 
So he has too many cards in hand, has to discard. Of note, he puts Anger into the bin, and because he has a basic mountain, this will give all of his creatures haste. On Kovacs' turn, he plays a Plains, and then he taps four for Moan of the Unhallowed. This gives him two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. That card also has Flashback. After that, he reveals Tetsamok Primal Death one more time, and he puts a Prey Counter out onto Trustani's Summoner. On the Busterkin's turn, he casts his commander, Lenore Autumn Sovereign. Lenore wants to see creatures with different powers with the Coven ability. Then he casts Kyler, Sigardian Emissary, which is an anthem effect that gets bigger based off the amount of plus one plus one counters on Kyler. Moves to combat, this triggers Lenore. He puts a counter on his Rhino and then draws a card and passes. Another island for my side of the board, followed by an Entomb. This triggers my Trail of Evidence and Erdworld Illuminator, giving me two clues. I then tutor up my Marionette Master and put her into the bin. This card is great whenever you get an artifact of yours into the graveyard. Following that, I cast Reanimate. This triggers Trail of Evidence, giving me one more clue. Then I bring Marionette Master out into the battlefield. Its Fabricate ability triggers, and I put three plus one plus one counters onto Marionette Master. I also lose six life. Over to J-Man. On his upkeep, Tovalar triggers, sees three different werewolves, and therefore triggers it to become nighttime. He then flips his werewolves. He'll draw for turn, and plays Unclaimed Territory, naming Werewolf. Following that, he casts Unnatural Growth, a ridiculous enchantment that allows him to double the power and toughness of his creatures on each combat. Then he moves into combat, and a great many things happen. He gets haste and trample, and bonus power and toughness, and he draws cards, and he deals damage, kills some creatures. Quite frankly, I'm not even really sure what's happening, but... At the end of the day, Busterkins took six, four of it was commander damage. He lost some creatures, and J-Man drew a bunch of cards. It also took forever to edit this scene, so there's that. Of note, J-Man's commander died in that exchange, and he also had to discard cards, one of them being Faithless Looting. On to Kovacs' turn, he casts Wayward Servant, an Orzov zombie that drains opponents whenever he brings out another zombie. Then he reveals Tetsamok. He puts a Prey Counter on Werewolf Pack Leader. Then he does it again, targeting my Marionette Master with the Prey Counter. And following that, he moves to combat. Of note, J-Man's unnatural growth triggers for his side of the board. Doesn't do anything here, but J-Man takes four, and on to Busterkins, who casts Heron's Grace Champion. This triggers Kylar, putting a 1-1 counter on it, which therefore pumps all the humans by plus one plus one. Then Heron's Grace Champion gives plus one plus one to all the humans and lifelink. Following that, he plays Captain Sisse, again triggering Kylar, giving more anthem effects to the humans. Then into combat, with Lenore's Coven ability triggering, gives a counter to Kylar again, therefore pumping the team one more time and drawing a card. Then he swings in at J-Man, and deals 15 points of damage to him, four of it being Commander. He drops a Plains on second main phase, and then he passes, but on his end step I crack a clue, triggering Marinette Master to drain J-Man for more life. Then before my turn begins, it becomes daytime because Busterkins cast two spells. Onto my turn, I draw, play an Island as my land, then I cast my Commander, Eloise, Nefalia's Sleuth who makes clue tokens and can surveil. I move it over to J-Man, who plays a forest for his turn. Then he plays Mayor of Avabrook. So this is an anthem effect for his humans, and then when it flips over, it is an anthem effect for wolves and werewolves. Also make him 2-2 tokens. Then he casts Harvest Hide Infiltrator, a daybound trampler. And when he flips over, he's a nightbound trampler. Following that, he'll move into combat with a couple of triggers. He'll stack his Reckless Storm Seeker's trigger first onto his Werewolf Pack Leader, and then all of his power and toughness is doubled with Unnatural Growth. Then he swings Toski at Kovacs, and Werewolf Pack Leader and Harvest Head Infiltrator at Busterkins. On the attack, he draws a card off of Werewolf Pack Leader. Before blocks, Busterkins casts Swords to Plowshares on Werewolf Pack Leader. In response, J-Man casts Heroic Intervention. I see an opportunity, and I say Fierce Guardianship counter the heroic intervention. This also gives me two clues. Heroic intervention dies, swords to plowshares resolves, and it exiles werewolf pack leader. J-Man gains 10 life. No blocks are declared for his attackers. This gives him draws and deals damage to his opponents. On to Kovacs' turn, he casts Liliana's Mastery, giving him two zombies, triggering Wayward Servant twice, and now he has an anthem effect for his zombies. He unfortunately did not find the land he was looking for, on to Busterkin's turn, he activates Captain Sisse, and he finds a legendary creature. This case, it's Sigarda, Heron's Grace, and brings that to hand. After that, he casts Sigarda, Heron's Grace. So not only does he have Hexproof, but all his humans do as well. He then activates and gets a Human Soldier token. This triggers Kylar, pumping the team. Then he moves into combat, triggering Lenore's Coven ability. Kylar gets a counter again, and again, the team is pumped. He swings Lenore at J-Man, but forgets that he has a 6-8 on the board because of unnatural growth. And then I take 10, Busterkins gains 10. He then plays a Plains as his land for turn, followed by a Kerbis, Harvest Celebrant. 
which comes in as a 4-4 and can remove a counter to protect a thing. On to my turn, untap upkeep draw. Then I start cracking clues, which triggers Marionette Master to drain J-Man for life, as well as surveil with Eloise. Now unfortunately, I don't cast a spell this turn, and when I pass the turn to J-Man, we all of us forgot that it was supposed to become night. Uh, very sorry for the inconvenience, we did determine that this should not have impacted the outcome of the game, so uh, we hope you enjoy the show anyway. Sage of Ancient Lore hits the battlefield for J-Man. This power and toughness is equal to the cards in his hand. He draws a card with that as well. And then following that, he casts Daybreak Ranger, which can deal two damage to a creature with flying, or fight a creature whenever it's a werewolf. On to combat, he triggers, again stacking it so that his Reckless Stormseeker hits first, and then Unnatural Growth pumps everything with double power and toughness. He then attacks BK and Buster Kins. Before blocks are declared, I cast a free Deadly Rollick, targeting his Harvest Tide Infiltrator and gaining me two clues. I also use Zulaport Cutthroat to block his Reckless Stormseeker. Busterkins uses Kylar to block the Sage and then activates Kerbis in order to protect Kylar from the damage. Because my Zulaport died, I drain each opponent. This also triggers Eloise, gaining me another clue. On to Kovacs' turn, he casts Risen Executioner, another Anthem effect for his zombies. This triggers Wayward Servant, draining his opponents and gaining him a life. On to combat, he swings total 20 damage at J-Man, presenting lethal. So J-Man is forced to block here. He uses, he uses his Daybreak Ranger to block Wayward Servant, and then Chump blocks with his Mayor. Sheltering Light targets Wayward Servant, keeping it around longer, and giving Kovacs a scry. Combat damage will resolve, killing Mayor, and then dealing 12 damage to J-Man. On to Busterkin's turn, he casts Somberwald Beastmaster, a human that triggers Kylar and comes with three bodies attached. He moves to combat, triggering Lenore and giving MVP Kylar another counter, drawing a card, and swings at Kovacs and BK. Kovacs has no blockers, and Busterkin's has lethal on board. I declare my blocks. Kovacs shuffles up for game two. I crack a clue, surveilling one, triggering Marionette Master and Eloise. I will then drain J-Man 4, which knocks him out of the game. Erdwell Illuminator, Marionette that master both die, which allows me to trigger Eloise and create two more clues. On to my turn, I untap upkeep and draw, and the card does not save me. So, congratulations Busterkins. Job well done. So which commanders from Midnight Hunt do you enjoy? Please tell us what you think. Please like, subscribe, and as always, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.